Hello everyone, welcome back to another painting party. Uh, I hope that you are all having a... Well, I hope that you have been having a safe week so far, uh, is I guess what I can say. Uh, great to see you all here. Looks like we've got a few people in the uh, in the stream already. So hello! Hi! I'm Scott, and uh, yeah, we're going to be continuing work on our uh, Dark Elf Queen on a Throne. Whew, sorry, I needed to just take a, take a breath. Um... It's been a week, hasn't it? it? It's been a it's been a week. Eric, it is great to see you. Uh, Fire Garnet, great to see you as well. Um, hope that you are all doing well. Yeah, I don't think I have much of a uh, much of a jumping into it uh, to go this week. Uh, for, I, for any of you who were here last night as we were doing our second episode of the Gauntlet, we had our first uh, team party kill, so they all went down. Uh, but we had a, um, a bit of an announcement where you may note that we have some links in the bottom of our stream uh, here. They are under the video. I only just learned how to do that. I, still learning Twitch, but hey, it's getting there. So yeah, uh, you may note that we've got some links for donations in the bottom of our, uh, our stream here. So yeah, I think that's enough for me. Let's go ahead and get into the painting of our Dark Elf Throne. Uh, this has been coming along very nicely. Uh, after you may recall, we had we had some tough times with the uh, the wash that it just wasn't sticking very well at all. So we we did a lot of work and honestly had to overwash the uh, the model itself, but it uh, it turned out pretty good. I had to do a little bit of extra work, um, but I think that once we get some highlighting done, yeah, things are going to turn out all right. Uh, so yeah, I think I've got uh, what we're going to be doing today. We've got some touch-ups to be doing on the the cloth here of the throne. Uh, we're going to have to do some work on these gems. They had to get a little dirty since we were getting heavy-handed with the wash. Uh, and already I'm actually seeing some areas under here that I'm going to have to be doing touch-ups on. Boy, howdy, this is going to take... Um, some some nitty gritty work, but it'll uh, it'll get there. How are we all doing this week? Uh, let me know. I'd love to I'd love to chat with you. Um, all right, let's go ahead. I've got some music playing. Boo boo boo. There we go. I've been enjoying having the music playing. I think it offers a great uh, environment. I know right now it's only coming through my microphone, so. Uh, let me know what the levels are looking like, if it's not loud enough. Because over here, it sounds very loud, but I know you're not going to be able to get as much of it. But I think we've got everything set up. Alrighty, getting down to it. Let's go ahead and start off with our heraldic... I always want to say heraldric. Um, so, hero but it's heraldic. Heraldic red. <laughs> that, was, that was not the, the pronunciation, or the, the emphasis that I should have done on that. Uh, but yeah, Heraldic Red by, uh, by Reaper. Uh, Ladies and Goth just wrapped up a Costco run. You actually found toilet paper. My goodness. <laughs> Congratulations. That is a hard commodity to come by these days. Uh, how was it? How was the, um... The I hope the Costco wasn't too crazy for you. You dig the music. Good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm realizing that as I, uh... As I do these, I, I tend to have some quiet, uh, some quiet times now with these these high detailed paints, um, and if I can have some music going on in the background as opposed to just silence, I think that's really going to help things out. So I've got a I've got a playlist that should be lasting a full. Uh, I think it's a good hour and a half. Um, so that's good. Costco is okay. Don't like doing it, and I'm glad it's done for the month. Yeah, that's the, that's the way to do it. You know, get it um, get it done for the whole month. Get it, get it all done in one one fell swoop. You know. go. 
Moscow was never my place to go. Yeah, no, I, um... I used to like going to Costco when I was younger. Um... Because it felt very much like, ah, getting getting out and about and look at this this whole big, large, large area that we can go uh, and, you know, move around a bit. And hey, the free samples are great. And as I started living on my own, uh, or like living with a roommate, basically my, uh, living outside of the family, you know, um, I also enjoyed Costco in that... Uh, I felt very adult. But now as a, 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 a legit, a, oh wow, I can't talk. As a legit adult, which are any of us ever really a legit adult? That that seems like a weird thing to say. Um, As someone who has spent some time as an adult, that's a better way of putting it. Um, Yeah, it's definitely a a chore that needs to get done. There we go. Now, as I've been cleaning up this, uh... Did my light just flicker? As I'm cleaning up the, uh... Cloth here, in this, uh, this lovely red, I have actually noticed some places where it's kicking up onto the throne itself. So I'm having to deal with that. We're really starting to get into like the, the nitty gritty um, detail work. Which is great, I love it. Uh, fire ground at Costco floors kill bad back joints. Adulting is not my favorite thing. Yeah, that's, um, that is totally fair. That is totally fair. Adulting has its, um, has its ups, definitely has its downs. Um, I'm, I'm going to try and avoid falling into that trap of, ah, oh, remember the good old days, because... If all we do is remember the good old days, you know, we can't move forward into um, the good the good now days, which you gotta have. You, you gotta you gotta be able to have them. As you go, I've had a similar experience when going to college and going on my own for the first time. Also had a local Fry's that was a big box store for computer parts, tech, and video games. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm familiar with Fry's. We have a, a Fry's Electronics here uh, up in my neck of the woods, and it has been a uh, um, very, very useful for me. And <laughs> it's it's like the it's the it's like the new version of Toys R Us for me as I've gotten older. It's just this big big uh, warehouse type feel with those tile floors and definitely echoey chamber where now instead of running around going oh I want this toy I want this to well no let's be honest that's e still exactly what I say I want this toy I want this toy the toy is just very different it's computer parts uh, <laughs> so there's that all right uh, what color were we using for the main body uniform gray let's get some uniform gray out and get the touch-ups on that um, I am Ozzy, uh, man, oh man, I, I'm gonna, I am Ozzy Mendez, Mendez, uh, Ozzy Mendez, uh, is how, what I'm gonna say for you, uh, yeah, it's a good philosophy, philosophy to have. Yeah, there's some great definition, uh, that is coming down on this, uh, on this, whew, on this uh, throne now. All right, guys, there are some, uh, I am Ozzy Mendia's Ask Me Anything. That makes so much more sense. <laughs> um, yeah, what I was saying is that the, the definition on this throne is not coming without, uh, without cost. It is taking a lot of effort to get it. 
Oof. Oh no. Oh no. That was a that was already a mistake. I should not have been going on to that with the paint. I should have been going on that with the wash. There we go. Clean that up. Ooh, this one's got some weird vibration sounds happening. This one is this. Hmm. Uh, okay, there were a couple other areas that I felt like I needed to clean up with that. Yeah, down here. I'm definitely going to have to... You know what? Let's actually move on to cleaning up the gems. I think for the most part, the throne is going to be okay. Um, especially once we start hitting it with highlights. So let's come into here. Uh, for everyone out there who's been asking me, like, what sort of games I like to play, uh, I did start a new one this week. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Satisfactory, which, if any of you aren't familiar with that, that is a uh, like a first-person resource. Ma it's not really resource management. It's more of just resource is the name of the game. Um, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of other point to it as opposed to you're just gathering resources uh, and then using those resources to make more resources. I suppose it, it is straight resource management, whereas um, other games that I've been playing, like um, uh, um, oh my gosh, it's Subnautica, jeez, apparently my brain is just in a great space. Anyone else just having their, their brains shutting down uh, during these times? It is, that's what's happening to me. Anyway, uh, been playing a lot of Satisfactory, where it's... Where other games are more resource management and survival, this is pure resource management. You don't have to deal with hunger. Uh, you don't have to deal with dehydration. Uh, you do have to deal with like health uh, and fall damage and things like that. There are monsters that you have you run into, um, and that. Uh, Yeah, you have to fight off in order to get more resources. But the whole thing is essentially build a factory, which is pretty fun. You recall StarCraft as a resource management. Yeah, definitely, where it's... it's um, Yeah, that's res uh, resource management combat... Sim what is that technically called when it's a top-down combat simulator? Because when now we're starting to get into things where it's... It is this, but it is also this. Ga games are no longer just one thing, you know? They are a few things that create them, which I think is great. Um, I, I don't mean, like, the more complex a game gets, the better I like it, but the more you can have in a game, the more uh, depth is added to it, and the, the more intrigue can be had from it, which is, I think, really cool. Real-time strategy. Thank you. That's that's what they're called. Real-time strategy games. Um, I was never good at... Well, I never played StarCraft against other people, or uh, Warcraft for that matter, because uh, when I first started playing StarCraft and Warcraft, uh, I didn't have internet. That is going to date that pretty heavily. <laughs> I, I did not have internet. Um, but I really enjoyed playing against the computer. 
Maisie Goth, I've been forgetting a lot. Uh, you write a lot of notes at work to remember. Yeah, I've been, uh, notes have been very helpful for me as well. I mean, as a, as a dungeon master or game master, I'm in a constant state of writing notes. But um, these days, that's been helpful. Also, I, I'm a big fan of lists. I feel so much more productive when I create a list and I can look at it and go, okay, here's what I need to get done. Um, and it is also kind of that um, reward system of, uh, okay, I'm going to get this done and this done and this done. And I feel good as I get other steps done. Okay, we're going to let some of this dry really quick because we still need to do our washes now on the emerald, uh, emeralds on the, um, the cloth here. And with those done, we should actually be pretty close to being done with our shading, and it'll be time to move on to those awesome, awesome highlights. Uh, Lazy Goth, I could only play StarCraft single player well. Uh, I had some friends that always beat me, so I got a bit old for me for multiplayer. Yep, I'm, I'm the same way. I, um, I only played it well single player. I'm... I play games to relax. Uh, I do this to relax. I Anything that I do in my spare time, I do to relax. I'm not a hugely competitive person. I want to be good at what I do, uh, but I don't want to fight people to be good at what I do, if that makes any sense. All right, we are going to pull the Nuln oil back out because there are some areas here that could just use a, a little touch-ups um, in the wash area. For some reason, the wash on this model, it's it's sticking to the high points and not the low, po low points, which is kind of a problem. In that it's exactly the opposite of what washes need to do. Which is why I've had to get so heavy-handed with it. So what is everyone else up to this week? Any uh, Anything fun going on? Anything that you are doing to um, stay safe and stay sane? Man, it's been a while since I've said that. Um, Should do it for, for the known oil for now. We are likely going to come back to it. Uh, and this here is just like a really cheap beater brush uh, that I found is excellent for uh, applying washes and things like that where I don't have to be incredibly detailed. Um, now if I have to apply a wash in a very specific area, I actually, that being said, I see exactly that. <laughs> uh, I will usually use a better brush than this. But for large applications, um, this suffices quite well. You can typically get these for anywhere from 99 cents to even 10 cents a brush, which can be quite helpful. Uh, Benjamin doing a lot of design work this upcoming weekend, or this upcoming week. Oh, good to know, good to know. Um, to always set my games to easy or story mode, mode, the more satisfaction when I relax after a hard week. Yes, I, I agree. Story mode is excellent. Um, and that, yeah, that's kind of what I go for when I, uh, um, play a game. I love games with a story. I know I've talked about that a lot. Finally get to see all of the basics for mini painting. Uh, we got our Nuln Oil. We might prep some minis tomorrow. That's awesome, Eric. Um, Nuln Oil is your staple. If I only had to have one wash, uh, I could use Nuln Oil and do anything. Um, that is fantastic. Uh, please let me know how that goes. I would love to see it. And I mean, if you 
um, are, um, you know, if you have any sort of setup, um, heck, let, let me tune in and let me watch. Um, or just, like, if you're doing it on Discord, I'd love to hang out. <laughs> I've, I've found this week that I am, uh, um, I'm looking for more ways to be social with people, you know? And that, that's definitely something that I'm very grateful for having this show for, to, to be able to socialize, because it's helpful. <laughs> All right, we're going to pull out our red tone here, uh, and we're going to use that on this clock. That should do some good work. Actually, you know what? I'm going to... I've got the room here. I'm going to bring my palette into into the frame. All right. So you can kind of see, see more of how I'm doing certain things. tone is looking lovely. shaky. Being very careful uh, around the edges there. I don't want to get this red tone on the rest of the throne. Very nice. Let's go ahead and get it on the very edge here. There we go. I find I do the same, uh, the same calming technique for my hands that I do uh, when I'm doing, uh, for painting, that I do when I'm doing archery. Um, I just take a deep inhale as I'm getting close to doing something, and then just a long, slow exhale as I'm painting down. So it kind of feels like... There we go. That was kind of an over-exaggeration of it, but you get the idea. Yeah, there is some great definition going on there. Um, you can at least take some decent pictures, maybe. Uh, yeah, no, like like I said, please, please uh, show us. Like, um, if you're, if if you want, send them to our um, our Facebook, um, or you can message them to us on Instagram. Um, you know, anywhere that you can send pictures. Um, I typically, um, if we ever get pictures of minis, I'm the one who uh, who will open those and address those. And I always, always, always uh, ask people before sharing them with the rest of the group. Uh, so you can send them to us in a, in a private message if you want it to be something that just we see. Um, but if it is something that you uh, want to share with the, uh, the entire of the, the AP community here, I mean, you know us. We are actively, actively uh, having this be... A community, you know, a, a place where we can all share stuff. And actually, on that note, I wanna I wanna talk about something. Um, it, it I've been I've been debating on this. When we first started AP, we had this whole like business model 
uh, set up where, well, not when we first started AP. Like when we first started it, it was it was a bunch of us doing what we love and wanting to share it. Um, but you know, when we started getting into things like, okay, how, uh, so if we were going to do a Patreon, what, uh, what sort of rewards could we offer uh, as incentives? And, and the thing that happened there was, uh, we had our private Discord server. Uh, and that seemed like a good idea. To be honest, I've been... <laughs> I've talked a little bit about, uh, about this with the rest of the AP team, and so I, I haven't really told them I was going to talk about this today, but... Here goes. Um, I've been considering making our Discord server public um, and, and having like a, a private channel in the Discord that our patrons could be, because we, we do want there to be um, you know something that only the patrons get. But it, it goes back with that community of, I want to grow this as a place where people can hang out and it would be lovely to, um, it, it feels exclusive right now. Um, or it doesn't feel exclusive. It feels like we are excluding. Um, and yeah, e exactly. Um, that a patron only channel, but otherwise a public forum. And that way we can, we can have you all hang out. Um, and you know, we, um, it's not the sort of place that we're going to be constantly, but it would also be a great place that people could, um, get notifications of you know when we're going live and, and doing stuff and i think that could be fun anyway yeah i'm I, i'd love to hear what you guys think about it looks like uh we're, we're getting some people in what man my mind they're gonna go green tone we're going with the green tone because now the the uh the cloth here is looking actually there's a little bit more work that needs doing on this cloth oh and i'm out of red tone um Hey, uh, I think that's a good compromise. Yeah, I, I think that's a good place. I'm, I'm going to run that up the flagpole with uh, the rest of the AP team today. Um, see what they think. There we go. That's what that needed. Um, so with any luck, I'll be able to, you know, announce that to everyone on Monday at Miniature Monday Live when, uh, uh, how that went. Because something I have definitely noticed is, I, I don't know, I'd like, I'd like to get our community in one place, and right now it feels like we're splitting it all over the place. Um, I don't, I, I don't like that. Green Tone has joined the party. You can see as I'm doing this, um, I, you're using very little paint. Um, on, you know, this is a, a decent sized model. Wow, that is loud. Uh, this is a decent sized model, and I'm using so little paint that goes down. It is always better to start with small amounts. I think my painting, uh, <laughs> I was going to say my painting instructor, but yeah, it kind of is that way. Um, gentleman who taught me how to paint would always say use about a dime size uh, amount of paint. And for a standard mini, a dime size is about all you need. And um, I've definitely found that. And I've also found that I'm using less than that. So I'll use just this little bit of a drop. Um, and it's always good to ha uh, add, um, you can always add. You can't put the paint back in the dropper, you know? <laughs> All right, so I know we already did this, but you watched. We, we touched up this, so we're going to do that now. Ooh, that's looking nice. That is looking very pretty. Okay. So while these washes dry, um, uh, when 
I do oil painting, I squeeze out a lot of pigment. I'm not used to using just a drop of pigment. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, I um, completely understand that. I've done not much oil painting. I, I did a little. <laughs> Actually, the, the time that I did so, some oil painting, I went to a, a, a museum and uh, I saw a painting. And, and I got a little... I don't want to say angry or or even annoyed. I just had that moment of I looked at that I looked at a piece and I went, "Well, I could do that." <laughs> so so I did. I I went home uh and the next day I I picked up some oil paints. I picked up a couple of small canvases. Uh and I made it. And I ended up making three. There's some cool little abstract pieces of like a solid color, like uh, it, was, it was a black with a solid red line going through it, and then I ended up doing two more, another bit of black with a solid green line, and then white with a solid yellow line. And um, I really liked them. I did that set of three, and I, I ended up framing them. I enjoyed doing that. And that's about the extent of the oil painting that I did. And that, that was a while ago. Uh, I still have them. They're actually up on the wall uh, behind me. Um... <laughs> But, uh, but I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed doing that. Okay, so, highlights. Here's what I'm thinking. Um, we're going to be doing a, a chunk of dry brushing onto the throne itself. Because uh, there's a lot going on here, but we're going to have to be careful. Um, well, actually, we're not going to have to be too careful with uh, the, the darker or the lighter gray because um, that's going to have to be highlighted gray for the, the spider legs anyway. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, all right, so let's get our dry brush brush, which again, technically I could do this with my same brush. Um, I just, I don't know, I've gotten in the habit of, I, I like having different brushes for different things. It, uh, it tends to make my life easier. Uh, okay. We are going to go ahead and load up the brush with our uniform gray, which was our original color. So we always start highlighting with the original color. And I'm going to get a chunk of that off. And now I'm just going to go over. As we do this, you shouldn't do it and immediately see a drastic change. You don't want to see that incredibly drastic change um, to what you painted. Because if, if that happens, you're doing dry brushing wrong. Because we're just hit, hitting the raised edges. There will be some areas that you see drastic change, like this fresh uh, wash area is going to get cleaned up quite a bit. Yeah, there we go. So already you can see it's a very subtle thing. Um, but that's the thing, we want it to be subtle. And because we've loaded up the brush and have then taken taken most of it off. Again, when I say load up the brush, I don't mean like soak it in in the color no I'm um, just gonna get color onto it and then you're gonna get the brush fairly dry that's why it's called dry brushing <laughs> the more you know and this is really where I need to practice more I need to um, 
I need to work on my subtlety. <laughs> I'm not a very subtle person. Um, I need... Yeah. Okay, I need some water. It's actually... When you look at something too much, um, you know, my, my focus was going there, so I need to... Yeah, and dry brushing is going to catch all of those, uh, like the high ridges. Um, so here's how we do this. The first round of dry brushing is going to be fairly heavy. Um, so I'm, I'm really going at and, and trying to get into those nooks and crannies because um, here's the deal no matter how good of a job i do i'll never be able to get everywhere um the the, sh the wash will stay in those recesses which is what we want um the wash is meant to stay in those recesses um and then from here, we're actually, we will move up to a lighter gray. Um, and as we move up to a lighter gray, I'm going to be less aggressive with it. Um, because that's going to be, that that's only going to hit the higher ridges. And then I'm going to be less aggressive and less aggressive and less aggressive. Almost went straight from the, the palette onto the mini there. That would have been that would have been an oops. I'm spending a lot of time on the back here, which is silly because how often is the back gonna be seen? So with that being said, you know what? No, I'm gonna keep uh, I'm gonna keep doing a little bit on the back. Keep doing a little bit on the back. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and move on. All right, now for this little tricky part in here. So actually here, what I'm gonna do is use my detail brush. Um, it's going to feel a little different because I've got a point, um, but I, I don't want to be... Essentially, I'm, I'm layering now right up against that edge, and even as I say that, man, that is not working. Okay, so I'm not going to use my fancy brush. Um, I'm going to use another beater brush, but something that has a little bit more of a point to it than what I was using. You know what? Actually, this one will probably work really well. All right, so let's clean this off. Let's get a more, a little bit more uniform gray here. Maybe the Drow Empress has telekinesis at, or levitate and can move the throne into midair. You know what? Um, some of my favorite minis out there, or models, I should say, um, are the things that look as though they're floating and levitating. They look as though they're defying gravity. Um, there's some great, I, I saw some amazing pieces. I don't know if, if any of you had seen the, I, it became popular uh, for a while here, that trick of um, like something that looked like it was floating and had three chains that were allowing it 
to support it in such a way that it looked like it was floating. I don't know if any of you understand at all what I'm talking about because I'm doing a horrible job at describing it. Um, but someone took that technique and applied that to a mini, and it looked so freaking cool. I loved it. I'll have to see if I can find that and, and share it. Because, again, it looked awesome. Um, and here's something else I'm going to say. If you ever see something and you think, that looks awesome, man, I wish I had thought of that. Um, do it. Steal it. Steal the idea and use it. Um, one of uh, one of my favorite quotes that I, I used to see, like, what is it? Um, Good artists borrow, great artists steal. Um, like, if you see something and you go, man, I want to do that, do it. Now, if you're going to do it and... You know, if you're trying to make profit on it, um, accredit your work, you know? Um, you're like, hey, this is this is where I found this. This is where I saw this. Um, this, this is where I thought this would be cool. But if you're doing it just for, like, your, your home games uh, or anything like that, like, yeah. I will say most of my paint jobs that I that I do these days, um, I I see something cool, I see a cool paint job, and I go I, just like the the uh, the oil painting that I did. I saw something and I went, huh, I could do that, and then I do it. Um, and the same thing is true of my mini painting. I will look for inspiration. I will see something and go, that looks cool. I could do that. And then I do it. Um, heck, this uh, drow queen throne bit. I, uh, ooh, that was too much. Luckily with, I can, there we go, yeah, that'll work. Yeah, I, uh, so I saw some, uh, some pictures, not necessarily of this throne, um, but of, um, like, I mean, I just searched dr uh, Drow Throne or Dark Elf on a Throne uh, to find inspiration images to go off of, and I saw, um, I did see one of this exact throne actually with the green gems, and I thought, dang, that looks cool, and there we went. Um, and then I saw some other art that had, um, a drow on uh, a throne with the, uh, the red cloth. And again, it was a different throne. It wasn't this. But again, I thought, dang, that looks cool. And so here we are. Fire on it. You can't improve if you don't try to stretch. Absolutely. Um, and that's something that I've been, you know, hoping to do here with this channel is is have this be a place where I can. I. I one hundred percent have a fear of failure. Um. No question about it at all. And so this is forcing me to 
flex those creative muscles in a um, like in a more public setting, which is one hundred percent terrifying. I, I do not mind telling you that. Uh, okay, so we've done our first pass of dry brushing on the throne. We are going to then move into uh, dry brushing on the um, skeletal arm, or the, not the skeletal, my goodness, words, 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 the spider legs. And for that, we had black, gray, again, very important to write all these down. So black, gray by Vallejo. Let's go ahead and do that. So yeah, it started as, it started as a couple of things for me, this channel, um, or at least me doing painting on this channel. Um as a place to record what I was doing. Um, like, a, a, actually, a digital version of this. So here are my notes for all of the paints that I've done on this. Um, but I figured, hey, if I had a video of all of the digital work that I'm doing, that would be cool. And so here this is. Um, but then also as a place for me to, as I said, flex those creative muscles and try new things. And I thought that uh, doing it in a, a public forum such as this would kind of, it would help me stay accountable. You know, in that, in that um, if I said, all right, I'm going to try this, you guys would, you know, be there to be like, hey, Scott, remember you said you were going to try this? So come on, chop, chop, do it. <laughs> all right. So we just did one pass of the um, the, the black gray on the spidery legs, and we're gonna go ahead now and go into a pass of the lighter gray. But on the spider legs, uh, we're going to do this much lighter because if we look at the tones that we're using, we, we did a heavy pass on the main throne because that was its base color. So we've done a light pass on the spider legs in its main color, the black gray. Now we're going for our second pass with the lighter gray. So this is going to be much lighter. I'm not gonna be nearly as heavy handed. going to get into those areas that I realized I missed. That's going to do that for the spider legs. Uh, I think I missed this one here. And that one there. Perfect. Okay. So that's all we need to do for that. Um, now, let's go ahead and get an even lighter gray out. Um, and that is going to be our second pass on um, the body of the throne. So we're going to move into Army Painter's Ash Gray, which is a decent step up. And this one, we're going to go very light on the main body of the throne. To be honest, we might aim for just doing some edge highlighting on this. So again, very light.
getting those edges where the light would definitely hit. So I'm, I'm going heavy on those spots, but that's it. There's almost no paint left on this brush at this point, and I'm still going at it. There we go. And that's, gosh, I wonder if you can see the definition now that we've got on this throne. Um, could we go lighter? Yes. Am I going to? You know what, actually, I think I am. <laughs> I think I am. Um, I don't have a lighter gray. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a little bit, actually, yeah. We're gonna go straight matte white on this. Um, uh, no, we're not gonna go straight. We're not gonna go straight matte white. We're gonna, we're gonna mix the, the white in with the gray. It's gonna get very light, but it's not gonna be pure white. Probably shouldn't have mixed it with my dry brush, but oh well. There we go. Uh, could we go lighter? Yes. Am I going to? Yes. <laughs> yep. Okay. Man, I'm getting most of the paint off of this. I want very little, and I'm just going for like the very edges. I'm going to I'm going to do my best to do just an, ed an edge highlight here. In fact, that's how we're going to do it. Um I'm not going to be dry brushing that. I'm going to be edge highlighting this. So, we're going to get this on our brush. And here we go. See how much more crisp this looks now when I'm doing it? And if I get too much on, I can actually go on with my finger and brush that away. There's a little bit there that I think needs to get snipped away. All right, here we go. Now, 
And because I went this many tones lighter, I am going to have to go back um, and do some more highlighting on the spidery legs. There we go. <laughs> There's that technique I was telling you about. Ooh, that was too much, that was too much. And there we go. Ooh, actually, that one might need a little more touch-up from me. Come on. There we go. See? You can remove paint. It can be tricky, but it can be done. So these little bits are so subtle, um, but they are very important. And it is going to dry uh, lighter than it looks as soon as it goes on. So there's there's that to keep in mind. You know, if you look at it and go, wow, that's really bright. Just remember, it will darken down slightly as, as you do it. So that's okay. And for this sort of um, highlighting, I'm using the flat of my brush because um, that's helping me to just catch those raised edges. Whoa, that was a lot. It's helping me to just catch those raised edges. go 
That is looking pretty sharp. Let's go ahead and add a little bit onto this. Oh, that's looking lovely. It would be really cool to have a life-size drow throne like that for the home. Absolutely. You know, I know a lot of people out there, like, yes, I want a, um, the, the Iron Throne from Game of Thrones. That's what it was called, right? The Iron Throne? I, I watched a couple seasons, and that was really it for me. Um, but yeah, I, I would much prefer this throne. To have at home. All right, now that I've done that, I'm gonna go back over the uh, the spider legs with the slicker brush to get a little more definition to those because they're kind of getting lost in the painting of this, and we don't want that. sloppy. It's like having an eraser. If you just go ahead and uh, put some uh, some paint back on, or some water back on the brush, you can just go ahead and erase the problem that you just did. Has anyone ever complimented you on how well aligned the craft mat is with the framing? Very satisfactory. <laughs> OCD approved. Um, I don't think anyone has. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I will admit that I spend a good chunk of time before we uh, get started here and make sure that this mat is properly aligned. Um, and it's actually been real... Boy. It's been really helpful to have this mat as opposed to my old little one. If anyone, uh, you know, has been here 
long enough to remember, I know a few of you have, uh, my little tiny green mat um, that has since been retired. Uh, having this one has been so much more convenient and helpful because I can get a good bit of framing for the show with it. Okay, now we're getting some more definition back to those spider legs. See, this is why I, I do prefer layering so much more than uh, dry brushing, specifically because you can be this precise. Um, and I, I did anticipate that I'd be doing a combination of layering and dry brushing on this miniature. Um, all right, now I'm going to go back in. This is with the ash gray, so this is without the white added to it. Um, and just going to hit the tips. Oh, that's more. That's more than that. There we go. Um, so just really give that final bit of definition. Drop that. Whoa, my phone just went off. <laughs> That's wow, did you see me jump? <laughs> Whoo. <Whew. laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was good. I needed a good laugh. looking pretty that's looking real pretty whoo okay now that some pretty darn looking darn looking darn good looking work on the throne um i think so all that we have left to do on this before we can call the throne done is um Oh, yeah, actually, no, I'm... <laughs> I spoke too soon! Let's go ahead and get a little bit of highlighting work done on the back here. Ooh. And actually, you know what? I'm going to say, for the sake of time on that, we can go ahead and just do this as dry brushing. So you'll be able to see kind of the difference that you get from dry brushing versus layering.
let's go ahead and then moving into the lightest color that we have. And again, just gonna hit those raised edges. almost like magically revealing something with invisible uh, like magically revealing invisible ink as you brush just seeing those highlights come to life it can be so incredibly satisfying so you can see it's a little sloppier But you can you can get the same result, and it does in many ways look a little more organic uh, as that comes alive. There we go. All right, I think with that. So what I'm doing now is actually I'm going back over the layering that I did with just a wee bit of dry brushing to try and blend that together. Now I'll, I'll, the other thing that's going to happen is the, the blending will happen um, when we get in and we do some glazing, which will be great. But I just kind of wanted to do that as well. Here we go. So yeah, that's looking pretty darn sweet. Um, Hey, Dave, uh, no worries at all. Thank you so much. We uh, we almost missed you. I was just about to, to end the stream before I uh, realized I had missed something. But yeah, so highlighting really gave us some beautiful work here. So yeah, there we go. We've got our highlighting. I, I think we've got the highlighting on the body of the throne done um we i say as i go back for more uh oh gosh oh aha all right yeah i'm gonna call that done um otherwise i could just keep doing stuff to it all afternoon uh all right so we've got the body of the throne highlighted um next week we are going to highlight the uh uh the cloth on the throne and we are going to highlight the gems and with any luck that will mean that we will move into uh highlighting or starting work on the queen herself who needs to be seated on this throne uh that's gonna be so man i might have to tighten up the frame on that so we can get a good look but um, this is this is turning out to be pretty darn sweet. So with that, uh, I want to go ahead and thank you all so much for being here. Um, this this is helpful, I, I think. At least I know I could. Uh, I, I I can't get my words working. So you know what? I'm I'm not going to try and get my words working. I just want to thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you all for joining me. Um, Thank you all for helping to create a uh, welcoming environment for all. Um, I've been looking forward to these days oh so much ever since that we've started this community. Uh, I hope that everyone has a very safe uh, week. I hope that everyone has a healthy week. Um, I will look forward to seeing many of you on Monday for our Miniature Monday on YouTube, uh, which eventually we are going to switch over to uh, to Twitch here because I think splitting between the two platforms has been uh, kind of difficult. So uh, looking forward to seeing you all on uh, Miniature Monday. We'll see you at the Gauntlet on Friday. And if I don't see you at either of those, I will see you next week as we continue work on our Dark Elf. So with that being said, we'll see you all. Bye. <laughs>